In this demo, we're going to do exactly what we did just now in the lesson. We're going to use the category partition method to go from a high-level description of a piece of software, of a program, to a set of test cases for that program. To do that, we're going to use a simple tool. So I'm going to show you here the tool that is called a TSL generator, right here. This tool is available to you, so you can look in the class notes to see information on how to download it. And together with the tool, we're also going to provide a manual for the tool and the set of files that I'm going to use in this demo, so that you'll be able to do exactly what I'm doing. So again, all of those are available from the class notes. So specifically, today we're going to write test cases for the Grab program. So in case you're familiar with the Grab utility, this is a simplified version of that utility. So basically, the Grab utility allows you to search a file for the occurrences of a given pattern. So you can invoke it, as is shown here in the synopsis, by executing grep, the pattern that you're looking for, and the file name in which you want to look for the pattern. And let me read the description of the grep utility. The grep utility searches files for a pattern and prints all lines that contain that pattern on the standard output. A line that contains multiple occurrences of the pattern is printed only once. The pattern is any sequence of characters. To include a blank in the pattern, the entire pattern must be enclosed in single quotes. To include a quote sign in the pattern, the quote sign must be escaped, which means that we have to put a slash in front of the quote sign. And in general, it is safest to enclose the entire pattern in single quotes. So this is our high-level description for the program, for the software system that we need to test. So now let me show you what a possible set of categories and partitions could be for this program. So what I have here is a file a textual file, which contains all the categories and partitions for the elements that are relevant for my program. In particular, when we look at the file, we can see that the file can be characterized by its size. And in this case, I got two choices. The file can be empty or not empty. The second characteristic of the file that I'm considering is the number of occurrences of the pattern in the file. And I'm considering that the pattern might not occur in the file, or it might occur once or multiple times. I'm not going to go through the rest of the file because we already covered how to apply the category partition method in the lesson. So if you have doubts about that, about the method and how to apply it, you might want to go back and watch again the lesson. What I want to show you here is how you can go from this information that you have here, that we have derived by applying the, the first steps of the method, to a set of test frames and then a set of test packs. So to do that, we're going to use the tool that I just mentioned. So let me bring back my terminal. So first of all, let's see how we can run the tool. So you have a manual that will explain all the details on how to build the file that we're going to feed the tool. So what is the format and so on. Here I'm just going to see how I can run the tool. So first of all, let me point out that this was developed uh, together by uh, professors from the University of California, Irvine, and Oregon State University. And as you can see, we can run TSL generator and specify that we want to see the man page. So in this case, if we run it this, this way, you'll have some basic information on how to run the tool. And from the main page, uh, you can see that you can specify the minus C flag. And in this case, uh, the TSL generator will report the number of test frames generated without writing them to output. So for example, you might want to use this as we will do to see how many tests that you will generate with the current set of categories, partitions, and choices. The minus S option will print the result of the TSL uh, generator on the standard output. And finally, you can use minus O to specify an output file where to put the output of the program. So let's uh, first uh, run our TSL generator by specifying the minus C option and by bypassing our current set of uh, category, partitions, and choices. Okay, so let me remind you that what the, the tool will do is what we will do manually otherwise, which is to combine all these choices so as to have one test case for each combination. So if we do that, you can see that the tool tells us that we will generate 7,776 test frames in this case. And this seems to be a little too much for a program as small as the one that we are testing. And assume, for instance, that we don't have the resources to run these many test cases for, for the grab program. In addition, consider that in this case, uh, we are computing all possible combinations of choices. And there's going to be some combinations that do not make sense, as we discussed in the lesson. So what we might want to do in this case is to go back to our spec and start adding constraints to eliminate 
these meaningless combinations. So I'm going to show you the result of doing that. And I'm going to show you a few examples. For example, here, when the file is empty, I'm going to define this property empty file. And how am I going to use this property? Well, for example, here, it doesn't make sense to consider the case in which we have one or many occurrences of the pattern in the file if the file is empty. Therefore, I'm going to tell the tool that it should consider this specific choice only if the file is not empty only if empty file is not defined. And that will skip, for example, all the combinations in which the file is empty. And I'm trying to generate a test case that has one occurrence of the pattern in the file, which is simply not possible. So for another example, in case I have an empty pattern, I define the property empty pattern. And then I avoid the choices that involve the pattern in case the pattern is empty. Because for example, I cannot have uh, uh, quotes uh, in a pattern that is empty. For example, it doesn't make sense to have blanks, so one or more blanks, if the pattern is empty. So I'm going to specify again that this choice should be considered only if we don't have an empty pattern, and so on and so forth. So now, after I added these constraints, I can go back and compute again the number of test frames and therefore test cases that will be generated with these constraints. So let me go again to my terminal. OK, so now I'm going to run my TSL generator again. Uh, and I'm going to run it on the second version of this file. And you can see that I reduced uh, the number of test frames from about 7,800 to about 1,700. So it's quite a, quite a big reduction by eliminating all these combinations that do not make sense. But let's assume again that we want to reduce this further so that we don't want to generate those many test frames and therefore test cases. So what can we do? We go back to our spec. And in this case, we start adding error constraints. So if you remember what we said in the lesson, error constraints are constraints that indicate a choice that has to do with an erroneous behavior. For example, an erroneous input provided to the program. So here, for instance, we're indicating the presence of incorrectly and closing quotes as an error choice. Same thing if there's no file corresponding to the name that we provide to the tool. Okay, we say that this corresponds to an error. So how is the tool going to use this information? It's using this information by producing only one combination that involves uh, error choices instead of combining them with other choices. So let's see what happens after we added these error constraints. So we go back to our console once more. And in this case, uh, we want to run the TSL generator with the version of, the, of my file that contains the error constraints. And again, I reduce quite a bit the number of test frames. So now I have only 562 test frames that will be generated by using the file that I provided. So for the last time, let's assume that we really want to cut down the number of test frames, so the number of test cases. So once more, we go back to our file. And at this point, what we can add is the final type of constraints that we have, which are single constraints. And single constraints are basically indicated choices that we don't want to combine with other choices. So they have the same effect of the error constraints, but they have a different meaning. So they do not indicate choices that correspond to an error. In other words, I can use the single constraints uh, to identify choices that I want to test only once. So for example, in this case, uh, I might decide uh, that I want to have only one test frame that tests my program with a file being empty. And I can do the same for other choices. So basically, I can continue adding this single constraint until I get down to the number of test frames and therefore the number of test cases that I want. So now let's go back uh, once more to our console. And so now if we run using this file as input, you can see that we have 35 test frames generated. So this is a fairly low number of test cases. So we might decide that we want to go ahead and write these test frames to a file. So now let's open this file that we just generated. And as you can see here, I have exactly 35 test frames, as expected. Some of those correspond to the single and error cases. So in this case, the only choice that I have indicated is the one that corresponds to the single or error constraint. Whereas for the other ones, I actually have the whole test spec. So let's pick one just to give you an example. In this case, test frame number 15, that that will correspond to test case number 15. And here you can see that we have all of the information. So this is a test specification, all the information that we need to generate a corresponding test. We know that we need a file that is not empty. 
that we need to have uh, one occurrence of the pattern in the file, one occurrence of the pattern in one line, the position of the pattern in the file can be any position, the length of the pattern must be more than one character, the pattern should not be enclosed in quotes, there should be one white space, one quote within the pattern, and finally, the file that we pass to the program should exist, so the file should be present. So I can easily transform all of this into an actual test case. And notice that even though we're not, we're not gonna do it here, in cases like this, it might even be possible to automatically generate the test cases from the test specifications, because here, for example, here it should be relatively straightforward to parse these test specifications and generate test cases accordingly. So just to summarize, what we have done is to go from one high-level description of a program to a set of categories, partitions, and choices for that program. Then we have combined them in different ways, adding more and more constraints to reduce the number of combinations until we ended up with the right number of test cases, so the number of test cases that we were fine generating. We generated the corresponding test specifications, and at that point, we could just go ahead, generate the test cases, and test our application. So, and you can see how this can result in a much more thorough testing of your application, because instead of reading this description and just trying to come up with test cases for it, we can break down the process in steps that are easy to perform individually, that can be automated as much as possible, and they will end up with a set of test cases that will test all the interesting aspects of your application.